If we are going to pray for people to be healed, ako ние се молиме за луѓе кои треба да бидат издекувани, if we are going to expect God to move in people's lives, ако ние очекуваме да Бог биде во животот на луѓето, there should be good reason for that in the Bible. Тогаш мора да има добри причини напишени во Библијата. So I want to share with you some Bible verses. И така јас сакам да поделам со вас некои стихови од Библијата. You may know many of them or all of them. Ви може би да знаете некои од овие стихови, а може би да ги знаете сите стихови. But I want to prompt your thinking. Но сакам да направам да вие размислите. To see what is clearly stated for us. Да видиме што на вистина е кажано за нас. And to allow the Holy Spirit to quicken faith within you. И да да почнеме да светиот дух да работи по вас that God wishes to move powerfully in your life and in the lives of your loved ones. It is no secret that Jesus healed people. Jesus did miracles all over the place. He healed all kinds of diseases and sickness. Тој лекуваше разни болести и разни физички потреби. So in Matthew chapter 4 it says quite simply. И во Матеја четврта глава 23 стих многу јасно и просто го зборува. Jesus went throughout Galilee. И вели таму иду Исус одеше по цела Галилеја. Teaching in their synagogues. Поучавајќи по синагогите. Proclaiming the good news of the kingdom проповедајќи го евангелието на царството and healing every disease and sickness among the people и лекувајќи секаква болест и немоќ кај народот we see in the scripture that jesus never said oh i'm sorry i cannot pray for you во можеме ние да видиме да никаде исус не рече на некој о извини ама јас не можам да се молам за тебе if the person was a leper jesus could heal them ако некој лице беше Губав или димаше лепроза, Исус ќе се молеше за него. If the person was maimed and had part of their body missing, Jesus could heal them. И некои кои беа сакати и кои може би некој дел од телото им недостасуваше, Исус се молеше и за нив. If a person was dead, Jesus could raise them to life. Ако некој лице е мртво умрело, Исус се молеше и тие оживува. And if the person was like a madman controlled by the devil, Jesus could heal them. И ако некој лице е контролирано од дјаволот и е како некој луд човек, Исус се молеше. And it's interesting to connect all of those miracles that Jesus did. И интересно да ги собереме сите овие нешта и да ги сврзиме едно со друга до кој Исус се молеше. With the kingdom of God. Со царството Божје. You see, Jesus took his disciples and he sent them out to pray for people. Исус ги зема своите ученици и им покаже како да се молат за луѓето. He sent them out right out to the whole of, of Israel at the time. Тој ги испрати во на време низ целиот Израел. And he said to them among the things they were to do. И тој им рече да нешто да кои се така они треба да ги прават. They were to heal the sick. Дека тие треба да ги лекуваат болните. So it wasn't just Jesus that did the healing. Затоа не беше само Исус кој лекуваше. Peter and James and John and Nathaniel, these people did miracles of healing. Peter, Jacob, and the other disciples did miracles of healing. But Jesus said to them, when you pray for someone, no, Jesus said, when you pray for someone, when a person is healed, 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 give them this message. Give them this message. The kingdom of heaven. Царството Божје has come near to you. Дојде многу блиску до вас. Now that's a very interesting connection. И тоа е една многу интересна врска. Because we know that flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. Бидејќи ние знаеме да телото и крвта не може да го наследат Божјето царство. So in the heavenly realm, you and I are completely separated. И така да во небесниот свет ние Ти ја сме разделени. We can't go there. Ние не можеме да отидеме таму. Because we're human, made out of flesh and blood. Бидејќи ние сме луѓе кои сме направени од тело и од крв. 
which is why Jesus said that we must be born again on the inside. Zato Isus reče vi morate da bidete rodeni na novo natrešno. So something of the spirit of God is now inside us. Treba nešto od Božjeg duh da bide vo nas. And now we can enter into God's kingdom. I koga to obime togaš nije možeme da dojdeme vo Božje to carstvo. Because we are not just flesh and blood anymore. Bideći nije ne sme poveće samo telo i krv. God's kingdom is able to invade us. Bože to carstvo može da dojde vo nas. But we are stuck unable to go into God's kingdom. No, nije ne možeme da vlezeme da otidemo u Bože to carstvo. So I picture it here as God's kingdom and us below. I tako ima jedna slika kako Bože to carstvo i nije luke to koji smo ovde nisko na ovde na zemljata. And there's a barrier that stops humans, flesh and blood from being able to go into God's kingdom. But God's kingdom is able to invade our world. And that's what Jesus did. He brought the miracle power of heaven and brought it down to earth. Той ја донесе силата Божја кој прави чудо од небеста ја донесе овде на земјата. So healing of our physical bodies, where does it come from? И така лекување на физичките тела од каде доаѓа ова нешто? It comes from God's kingdom. Доаѓа од Божјето царство. It doesn't come from one man to another. Не доаѓа од еден човек на друг човек. Because this is something from the kingdom of heaven. Now when we are born again, something from God's kingdom is ignited inside us. We are still on earth. We are still flesh and blood. But we have something else inside us as well. And Jesus made the comment that the people who believe in him would have a river of living water coming out of them that came from deep inside. Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Where do those rivers of water come from? Oh, is it because of the food we eat? Or the books we read? Or the money we make? Or the things we own? No, it comes from God's kingdom. When we freely receive from God's kingdom, we can freely give that out to us. So now we can do the things that Jesus did. Oh, somebody says, no, we can't do what Jesus did. He was the son of God. And we're just believers in Jesus. But when something from the kingdom of heaven has been birthed within us, We can go and do the works of Jesus. Look at what Jesus said. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. And they will even do greater things. Because I'm going to the Father. Now, if I was to pray for someone and they were to be healed, I might like to give the impression that I'm very capable and very powerful. But you know straight away that can't be true. Because flesh and blood people cannot inherit the power and wonder of God's kingdom. 
Тоа кои се тело и крв не може да го да да влезат во царство Божје. It's only because God's kingdom has been placed within us. No, само тогаш кога Божјето царство доаѓа во нас. That God can move through us and touch someone else. Тогаш Бог може преку нас да се раздежи и да се допре и да на кон другите луѓе. And based on what Jesus said in John 14. Јоана што Исус го каже во Евангелието по Јоана 14 глава. That is God's plan. Ова е Божјиот план. Jesus could only ever be in one place at a time. Исус може да биде само на едно место. Only in one village. Само во едно село и во исто време. But when he sent his disciples out, many more places were touched by the power of God. Но кога тој ги испрати учениците, тогаш многу луѓе беа допрени од силата Божја. And Jesus has now gone back to heaven. Исус сега е во небесата. People say, oh, "I wish Jesus was here." И некои ќе кажат, "Оо, колку добро е ако Исус беше овде денес." He'd be able to heal this situation. Тој може да излекува сите овие ситуации. And that's true. Тоа е вистина. But now we have Christ within us. Но сега ние го имаме Христос кој е во нас. And we do what Jesus did. И ние правиме она што Исус правеше. So look at the instruction that Jesus gave to his disciples. Бидете упасата што Исус ги даде на неговите ученици. Heal the sick. Болни лекувајте. Raise the dead. Мртви воскреснувајте. Cleanse the lepers. Лепрозни очистувајте. Drive out the demons. Демони изгонувајте. Freely you have received. Бесплатно добивте. Freely give. Бесплатно давајте. If you receive something from God, ако ти примиш нешто од Бога, it's only because we gave it away freely. А тоа е бидејќи ние го дадовме тоа бесплатно. And where did we get it? И од каде ние го добиваме ова? We got it freely by God's kingdom coming into us. Ние го добиваме ова од Божјето царство кој доаѓа во нас. And you need to know it's not just the preachers that have the ability to pray for people. И треба да знаете не само проповедниците кои може да се молат за болните. All of the Christians are meant to be able to pray for one another and see the power of God. Сите христијани треба да се молат еден за друг и да видат славата Божја, силата Божја. So this is the advice from the Bible to the people that are sick. И ова е советот, упасото што Библијата го дава за оние кои се болни. Is there someone among you who is sick? Ако има некој помеѓу вас кој е болен, let them call the church leaders or the church elders. Нека да ги повикаат црквените водачи to pray over them да се молат за нив and anoint them with oil да извршат помазание in the lord's name на него со еле во името господово and the prayer offered in faith will restore the sick one и молитвата со вера ќе го исцели болниот the lord will raise him up и господ ќе го крене now i'm going to ask you a very difficult question јас сега ќе прашам едно многу тешко прашање who is going to raise them up the lord will raise him кој може да ги подигне нив господ е тој кој ќе ги подигне нив so even though it's the church elders who pray иако оние кои се во црквата црквите водачи се молат за нив or it's some other believer who prays for them или некој друг кој е верен се моли за нив or one of the disciples who prays for them или пак некој од учениците исусови се моли за нив or the world's most famous preacher who prays for them. Или може еден од најславните проповедници во овој свет се моли за нив. Who heals them? Кој ги излекува овие луѓе? It is God who does the work. Right? It is the Lord who will raise him up. Тоа е Господ кој ќе ги подигне или ќе ги крене нив. Now, we are meant to understand that. И ние треба да го разбереме ова. And to be bold enough to step out and pray for people. И треба да бидете да бидете свесни и спремни да се молите за луѓето кои се кои имаат потреба. But that's a bit scary, isn't it? Но тоа е малку страшно, не? To pray for somebody. Да се молиш за некој. What if they don't get healed? Што ако тој се излекува? What if nothing happens? Ја ако не се излекува, ја ако ништо не се догоди. Won't you feel terribly embarrassed? Тогаш заре нема да се усеќаш посрамен. So I understand that people will be reluctant to step out and pray for somebody. But I want to encourage your faith. Many years ago when I was a young married man, 
Много от дамна, кога аз бях млад човек, защото го оженят. There was a man in my church who was an electrician. Имаше един човек в нашата църква, който беше електричан. And he was making money by installing fans into people's bathrooms to get rid of the, uh, the, the steam from the shower. И той човек инсталираше овие фенови до байните на луѓето за димот од топлата вода да го изгони надвор. And he said to me one Sunday, I want to start praying for the sick. Една недела тој рече на мене, јас сакам да почнам да се молам за болните. And the next week he said, I did it. He said, I was busy fitting a fan in someone's um, ceiling in their bathroom. And the man who owned the house was there assisting me. But I noticed he was walking with quite a limp. So he said, while I was standing on the ladder, I said to him, have you got a problem with your leg? He said, yes, I have. One leg is shorter than the other. He said, oh, Jesus can fix that. And the man said, really? He said, yeah, when I finished, I'll pray for you. So after the thing was working and he packed up all his tools, he said to the man, sit back in your chair and give me your legs. So he pushed his back right up against the back of the chair so he was sitting straight. And my friend Terry took his feet and held him up. He said there was about an inch difference in the length of the leg. So he just held the heels in his hand like that. And he said, Jesus, I ask you now to heal this man's leg. And the leg just began to grow out till they were both the same length. The man was stunned. He stood up and said, that feels a whole lot better. He said, well, Jesus did that for you. Because Jesus loves you. And Jesus wants you to commit your life to him. Now, that still might sound like a very brave thing to do. But this is what believers are meant to do. Jesus, after he had risen from the dead, he said this to his disciples. Believers will show these signs. И той рече, верните ќе ги покажуваат овие знаци. In my name they will drive out demons. Во мое име тие ќе изгонуваат демони. They will speak with new tongues or new languages. Тие ќе зборуваат со нови јазици. They will pick up snakes in their hands. Тие ќе фатат змии со своите раце. If they drink a deadly thing it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick who will get well. So praying for sick people is meant to be done by ordinary Christians. Now I don't want you to feel guilty or to feel the under pressure to do anything. But I encourage you in Jesus' name. You can step out and expect God to touch people. I notice often when Susan is, uh, my wife is talking with people and they mention something is wrong. She will say, well, can I pray for you? Nobody says no to being prayed for. 
And she might just reach her hand across the coffee table and say, well, just let me hold your hand. And then she will pray and say, Lord, you know this need, would you heal this body? In Jesus' name. Amen. And then you can go back to drinking coffee or talking whatever you're talking about. It can be that simple. But what if you pray for someone who doesn't get well? Mm, how would you feel? Well, you prayed for me and nothing happened. That could be really embarrassing. But what if a doctor or a specialist fails to help someone? Do you make an appointment to go to the doctor? And do you sit there politely and then say, that last lot of tablets didn't work. Or do you go to the specialist and say, you stupid idiot? Doctors and specialists and experts around the world often don't get it right. In which case they might try something else. Or they might do some more a study onto the subject. Or their customer might go and see someone else. It's not your job to promise the results. You're standing on the word of God. So don't be intimidated by the thought that it may not happen. Step out and ask. Remember, God is the one who stays in control. We cannot make things happen. We can only cooperate with God. So we have to trust God's word. We need faith. We need to be humble. And we need to leave the results to God. God has given us wonderful promises. I am the Lord who heals you. I will take away sickness from among you. By the whipping, by the stripes in Jesus' back, you are Did you make those promises? Are these your ideas? Or is this the word of God? So your challenge is to stand up and say, God, I will believe what you have said. So how do you get healed? So, kako možeš da bideš izlekovan? Ask and it will be given to you. Barajte ili molite se i ki bi se dade na vas. Seek and you will find. Barajte i ki najdete. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Čukajte i ki bi se otvori vratata za vas. For everyone who asks receives. Zašto se koji što se moli dobiva. He who seeks finds. Onoj koji bara naođa. And to him who knocks the door will be opened. Now, the Bible students tell us that this language needs to be maybe explained. So, reference to asking, seeking and knocking 
Барате да се чукате, да се отвори, барате да найдете. Is in the sense of keep on doing these things. Тоа значи треба да имаме осеќај да продолжиме да ги правиме овие нешта. So it's to ask and keep on asking. Затоа ние треба да бараме и да продолжиме да бараме и да сакаме. To seek and keep on seeking. Да да сакаме да бараме и да продолжиме да најдеме. To knock and keep on knocking. Да чукаме и да продолжиме да чукаме. Some of you may know this old chorus. Може би некои од вас да ја знаете оваа една стара песна. Ask and keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks will find and to him who knocks the door will be open so ask seek knock so you need anything from god you ask as the writer to the Hebrews tells us, approach God's throne of grace with confidence. So we can receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. So any time you have a moment of need, because of sickness and pain, because of fear and agitation, because all the circumstances get complicated and you don't know what's going to work out. Come to God's throne of grace with confidence. Confidence in what? Confidence in yourself. No. Confidence in your willpower. Confidence in God. And His promises to you. God, you said everything would work out. But it's not working out right now. I cry out for your mercy and your grace. God, you said that by the stripes of Jesus my body has been healed. But I'm in pain. And the situation doesn't look good. I come before you confident in your promises. And I ask and keep on asking. I seek and keep on seeking. And I knock and keep on knocking. So, pray to God. Ask others to pray for you. Have people put their hands on your head or shoulder and pray for you. Have them put oil upon you. It's interesting, isn't it, that Jesus or the Bible says in one situation, put oil on somebody. Then it says in another situation, the believers will put their hands on them. We know in the life of Jesus that Jesus prayed for people that were a long way away and they were healed. So there is not one specific formula for getting healed. Except that we ask for it. And we trust God to keep His promises. So you pray and get others to pray with you. And claim God's promises. And to ask and keep on asking.